we can create. Rust enables you to build the software that you want to make, but we're too scared to try. What kind of tool is Rust? Flowing from the three principles discussed in the last section are three overarching features of the language. Performance. Concurrency. Memory efficiency. Section 1.7.1. .1, performance. Rust offers all of your computer's available performance. Famously, Rust does not rely on a garbage collector to provide its memory safety. There is, unfortunately, a problem with promising you faster programs. The speed of your CPU is fixed. Thus, for software to run faster, it needs to do less. Yet, the language is large. To resolve this conflict, Rust pushes the burden onto the compiler. The Rust community prefers a bigger language with a compiler that does more, rather than a simpler language where the compiler does less. The Rust compiler aggressively optimizes both the size and speed of your program. Rust also has some less obvious tricks. Cache-friendly data structures are provided by default. Arrays usually hold data within Rust programs rather than deeply nested tree structures that are created by pointers. This is referred to as data-oriented programming. The availability of a modern package manager, Cargo, makes it trivial to benefit from tens of thousands of open source packages. C and C++ have much less consistency here, and building large projects with many dependencies is typically difficult. Methods are always dispatched statically unless you explicitly request dynamic dispatch. This enables the compiler to heavily optimize code, sometimes to the point of eliminating the cost of a function call entirely. Section 1.7.2 Concurrency Asking a computer to do more than one thing at the same time has proven difficult for software engineers. As far as an OS is concerned, two independent threads of execution are at liberty to destroy each other if a programmer makes a serious mistake. Yet, Rust has spawned the expression, fearless concurrency. Its emphasis on safety crosses the bounds of independent threads. There is no global interpreter lock, or GIL, to constrain a thread speed. We'll explore some of the implications of this in Part 2. Section 1.7.3, Memory Efficiency. Rust enables you to create programs that require minimal memory. When needed, you can use fixed size structures and know exactly how every byte is managed. High-level constructs, such as iteration and generic types, incur minimal runtime overhead. Section 1.8, Downsides of Rust. It's easy to talk about this language as if it is the panacea for all software engineering. For example, a high-level syntax with low-level performance. Concurrency without crashes. C with perfect safety. These slogans, sometimes overstated, are great. But for all its merits, Rust does have some disadvantages. Section 1.8.1 Cyclic data structures. In Rust, it is difficult to model cyclic data like an arbitrary graph structure. Implementing a doubly linked list is an undergraduate level computer science problem. Yet, Rust safety checks do hamper progress here. If you're new to the language, avoid implementing these sorts of data structures until you're more familiar with Rust. Section 1.8.2 Compile times. Rust is slower at compiling code than its peer languages. It has a complex compiler toolchain that receives multiple intermediate representations and sends lots of code to the LLVM compiler. The unit of compilation for a Rust program is not an individual file, but a whole package, known affectionately as a crate. As crates can include multiple modules, these can be exceedingly large units to compile. Although this enables whole-of-crate optimization, it requires whole-of-crate compilation as well. 
Section 1.8.3 Strictness It's impossible, well, difficult, to be lazy when programming with Rust. Programs won't compile until everything is just right. The compiler is strict, but helpful. Over time, it's likely that you'll come to appreciate this feature. If you've ever programmed in a dynamic language, then you may have encountered the frustration of your program crashing because of a misnamed variable. Rust brings that frustration forward so that your users don't have to experience the frustration of things crashing. Section 1.8.4 Size of the Language Rust is large. It has a rich type system, several dozen keywords, and includes some features that are unavailable in other languages. These factors all combine to create a steep learning curve. To make this more manageable, I encourage learning Rust gradually. Start with a minimal subset of the language and give yourself time to learn the details when you need these. That is the approach taken in this book. Advanced concepts are deferred until much later. Section 1.8.5 Hype The Rust community is wary of growing too quickly and being consumed by hype. Yet, a number of software projects have encountered this question in their inbox. Have you considered rewriting this in Rust? Unfortunately, software written in Rust is still software. It's not immune to security problems and does not offer a panacea to all software engineering ills. Section 1.9 TLS Security Case Studies To demonstrate that Rust will not alleviate all errors, let's examine two serious exploits that threaten almost all Internet-facing devices and consider whether Rust would have prevented those. By 2015, as Rust gained prominence, the implementations of SSL TLS, namely OpenSSL and Apple's own fork, were found to have serious security holes. Known informally as Heartbleed and GoToFail, both exploits provided opportunities to test Rust's claims of memory safety. Rust is likely to have helped in both cases, but it is still possible to write Rust code that suffers from similar issues. Section 1.9.1 Heartbleed Heartbleed officially designated as CVE-2014-0160, was caused by reusing a buffer incorrectly. A buffer is a space set aside in memory for receiving input. Data can leak from one read to the next if the buffer's contents are not cleared between writes. Footnote 16. See CVE-2014-0160 detail at this link. Why does this situation occur? Programmers hunt for performance. Buffers are reused to minimize how often memory applications ask for memory from the OS. Imagine that we want to process some secret information from multiple users. We decide, for whatever reason, to reuse a single buffer through the course of the program. If we don't reset this buffer once we use it, information from earlier calls will leak to the latter ones. Here is a precis of a program that would encounter this error. Rust does not protect you from logical errors. It ensures that your data is never able to be written in two places at the same time. It does not ensure that your program is free from all security issues. Section 1.9.2 GoToFail the GoToFail bug, officially designated as CVE-2014-1266, was caused by programmer error coupled with C design issues, and potentially by its compiler not pointing out the flaw. A function that was designed to verify a cryptographic key pair ended up skipping all checks. Here is a selected extract from the original SSL Verify Sign Server Key Exchange function, with a fair amount of obfuscatory syntax retained. Footnote 17. See CVE-2014-1266 detail at this link. Footnote 18. Original available at this link. In the example code, the issue lies between lines 15 and 17. 
In C, logical tests do not require curly braces. C compilers interpret those three lines like this. Would Rust have helped? Probably. In this specific case, Rust's grammar would have caught the bug. It does not allow logical tests without curly braces. Rust also issues a warning when code is unreachable. But that doesn't mean the error is made impossible in Rust. Stressed programmers under tight deadlines make mistakes. In general, similar code would compile and run. Tip. Code with caution. Section 1.10. Where does Rust fit best? Although it was designed as a systems programming language, Rust is a general purpose language. It has been successfully deployed in many areas, which we discuss next. Section 1.10.1 .1, Command Line Utilities Rust offers three main advantages for programmers creating command line utilities. Minimal startup time, low memory use, and easy deployment. Programs start their work quickly because Rust does not need to initialize an interpreter, Python, Ruby, etc., or virtual machine, Java, C Sharp, etc. As a bare metal language, Rust produces memory efficient programs. As you'll see throughout the book, many types are zero sized. That is, these only exist as hints to the compiler and take up no memory at all in the running program. Footnote 19. The joke goes that Rust is as close to bare metal as possible. Utilities written in Rust are compiled as static binaries by default. This compilation method avoids depending on shared libraries that you must install before the program can run. Creating programs that can run without installation steps makes these easy to distribute. Section 1.10.2 Data Processing Rust excels at text processing and other forms of data wrangling. Programmers benefit from control over memory use and fast startup times. As of mid-2017, Rust touts the world's fastest regular expression engine. In 2019, the Apache Arrow Data Processing Project foundational to the Python and R data science ecosystems, accepted the Rust-based data fusion project. Rust also underlies the implementation of multiple search engines, data processing engines, and log parsing systems. Its type system and memory control provide you with the ability to create high-throughput data pipelines with a low and stable memory footprint. Small filter programs can be easily embedded into larger framework via Apache Storm, Apache Kafka, or Apache Hadoop streaming. Section 1.10.3 Extending Applications Rust is well suited for extending programs written in a dynamic language. This enables JNI, or Java Native Interface extensions, C extensions, or Erlang Elixir NIFs, native implemented functions, in Rust. C extensions are typically a scary proposition. These tend to be quite tightly integrated with the runtime. Make a mistake and you could be looking at a runaway memory consumption due to a memory leak or a complete crash. Rust takes away a lot of this anxiety. Sentry, a company that processes application errors, finds that Rust is an excellent candidate for rewriting CPU-intensive components of their Python system. Footnote 20. See Fixing Python Performance with Rust at this link. Dropbox used Rust to rewrite the file synchronization engine of its client-side application. More than performance, Rust's ergonomics and focus on correctness have helped us tame Sync's complexity. Footnote 21. See Rewriting the Heart of Our Sync Engine at this link. Section 1.10.4. Resource-Constrained Environments. C has occupied the domain of microcontrollers for decades. Yet, the Internet of Things, or IoT, is coming. That could mean many billions of insecure devices exposed to the network. 
Any input parsing code will be routinely probed for weaknesses. Given how infrequently firmware updates for these devices occur, it is critical that these are as secure as possible from the outset. Rust can play an important role here by adding a layer of safety without imposing runtime costs. Section 1.10.5 Server-Side Applications Most applications written in Rust live on the server. These could be serving web traffic or supporting businesses running their operations. There is also a tier of services that sit between the OS and your application. Rust is used to write databases, monitoring systems, search appliances, and messaging systems. For example, the MPM package registry for the JavaScript and Node.js communities is written in Rust. Footnote 22. See, community makes Rust an easy choice for MPM. The MPM registry uses Rust for its CPU-bound bottlenecks at this link. SLED, at this link, an embedded database can process a workload of 1 billion operations that includes 5% writes in less than a minute on a 16-core machine. Tentivity, a full-text search engine, can index 8 gigabytes of English Wikipedia in approximately 100 seconds on a 4-core desktop machine. Footnote 23. C of Tantivity's indexing at this link. Section 1.10.6 Desktop Applications There is nothing inherent in Rust design that prevents it from being deployed to develop user-facing software. Servo, the web browser engine that acted as an incubator for Rust's early development, is a user-facing application. Naturally, so are games. 1.10.7 Desktop There is still a significant need to write applications that live on people's computers. Desktop applications are often complex, difficult to engineer, and hard to support. With Rust's ergonomic approach to deployment and its rigor, it is likely to become the secret sauce for many applications. To start, these will be built by small, independent developers. As Rust matures, so will the ecosystem. Section 1.10.8 Mobile Android, iOS, and other smartphone operating systems generally provide a blessed path for developers. In the case of Android, that path is Java. In the case of Mac OS, developers generally program in Swift. There is, however, another way. Both platforms provide the ability for native applications to run on them. This is generally intended for applications written in C++, such as games, to be able to be deployed to people's phones. Rust is able to talk to the phone via the same interface with no additional runtime cost. Section 1.10.9 Web As you are probably aware, JavaScript is the language of the web. Over time, though, this will change. Browser vendors are developing a standard called WebAssembly, or WASM, that promises to be a compiler target for many languages. Rust is one of the first. Porting a Rust project to the browser requires only two additional command line commands. Several companies are exploring the use of Rust in the browser via WASM, notably Cloudflare and Fastly. Section 1.10.10, Systems Programming. In some sense, systems programming is Rust's raison d'etre. Many large programs have been implemented in Rust, including compilers, Rust itself, video game engines, and operating systems. The Rust community includes writers of parser generators, databases, and file formats. Rust has proven to be a productive environment for programmers who share Rust's goals. Three standout projects in this area include the following. Google is sponsoring the development of Fuchsia OS, an operating system for devices. Footnote 24. See Welcome to Fuchsia at fuchsia.dev. 
Microsoft is actively exploring writing low-level components in Rust for Windows. Footnote 25. See using Rust in Windows at this link. Amazon Web Services, or AWS, is building Bottle Rocket, a bespoke OS for hosting containers in the cloud. Footnote 26. See Bottle Rocket, Linux-based operating system purpose-built to run containers at this link. Section 1.11. Rust's hidden feature, its community. It takes more than software to grow a programming language. One of the things that the Rust team has done extraordinarily well is to foster a positive and welcoming community around the language. Everywhere you go within the Rust world, you'll find that you'll be treated with courtesy and respect. Section 1.12, Rust Phrasebook. When you interact with members of the Rust community, you'll soon encounter a few terms that have special meaning. Understanding the following terms makes it easier to understand why Rust has evolved the way it has and the problems that it attempts to solve. Empowering everyone. All programmers, regardless of ability or background, are welcome to participate. Programming, and particularly systems programming, should not be restricted to a blessed few. Blazingly fast. Rust is a fast programming language. You'll be able to write programs that match or exceed the performance of its peer languages, but you will have more safety guarantees. Fearless concurrency. Concurrent and parallel programming have always been seen as difficult. Rust frees you from whole classes of errors that have plagued its peer languages. No Rust 2.0. Rust code written today will always compile with a future Rust compiler. Rust is intended to be a reliable programming language that can be depended upon for decades to come. In accordance with semantic versioning, Rust is never backward incompatible, so it will never release a new major version. Zero cost abstractions. The features you gain from Rust impose no runtime cost. When you program in Rust, safety does not sacrifice speed. Summary. Many companies have successfully built large software projects in Rust. Software written in Rust can be compiled for the PC, the browser, and the server, as well as mobile and IoT devices. The Rust language is well-loved by software developers. It has repeatedly won Stack Overflow's Most Loved Programming Language title. Rust allows you to experiment without fear. It provides correctness guarantees that other tools are unable to provide without imposing runtime costs. With Rust, there are three main command line tools to learn. Cargo, which manages a whole crate. Rust Up, which manages Rust installations. Rust C, which manages compilation of Rust source code. Rust projects are not immune from all bugs. Rust code is stable, fast, and light on resources. Part 1. Rust Language Distinctives Part 1 of the book is a quick-fire introduction to the Rust programming language. By the end of the chapters in this part, you will have a good understanding of Rust syntax and know what motivates people to choose Rust. You will also understand some fundamental differences between Rust and its peer languages. Chapter 2. Language Foundations This chapter covers Coming to grips with the Rust syntax Learning fundamental types and data structures Building command line utilities Compiling programs this chapter introduces you to the fundamentals of Rust programming. By the end of the chapter, you will be able to create command line utilities and should be able to get the gist of most Rust programs. We'll work through most of the language's syntax, but defer much of the detail about why things are how they are for later in the book. Note. 
Programmers who have experience with another programming language will benefit the most from this chapter. If you are an experienced Rust programmer, feel free to skim through it. Beginners are welcomed. Rust community strives to be responsive to newcomers. At times, you may strike a mental pothole when you encounter terms such as lifetime elision, hygienic macros, move semantics, and algebraic data types without context. Don't be afraid to ask for help. The community is much more welcoming than these helpful yet opaque terms might suggest. In this chapter, we will build grep light, a greatly stripped-down version of the ubiquitous grep utility. Our grep light program looks for patterns within text and prints lines that match. This simple program allows us to focus on the unique features of Rust. The chapter takes a spiral approach to learning. A few concepts will be discussed multiple times. With each iteration, you will find yourself learning more. Figure 2.1 shows a completely unscientific map of the chapter. It's highly recommended that you follow along with the examples in this book. As a reminder, to access or download the source code for the listings, use either of these two sources. Manning.com slash books slash Rust dash in dash action. GitHub.com slash Rust dash in dash action slash code. Section 2.1. Creating a running program. Every plain text file has a hidden superpower. When it includes the right symbols, it can be converted into something that can be interpreted by a CPU. That is the magic of a programming language. This chapter's aim is to allow you to become familiar with the process of converting Rust source code into a running program. Understanding this process is more fun than it sounds. And it sets you up for an exciting learning journey. By the end of Chapter 4, you will have implemented a virtual CPU that can also interpret programs that you create. Section 2.1.1 Compiling Single Files with Rust-C Listing 2.1 is a short, yet complete Rust program. To translate it into a working program, we use software called a compiler. The compiler's role is to translate the source code into machine code, as well as take care of lots of bookkeeping to satisfy the operating system, or OS, and CPU that it is a runnable program. The Rust compiler is called Rust-C. You'll find the source code for listing 2.1 in the file ch2-ok.rs. To compile a single file written in Rust into a working program, 1. Save your source code to a file. In our case, we'll use the file name ok.rs. 2. Make sure that the source code includes a main function. 3. Open a shell window, such as Terminal, cmd.exe, PowerShell, Bash, ZSH, or any other. 4. Execute the command rust-c file, where file is the file you want to compile. When compilation succeeds, rust-c sends no output to the console. Behind the scenes, rust-c has dutifully created an executable using the input file name to choose the output file name. Assuming that you've saved listing 2.1 to a file called ok.rs, let's see what that looks like. The following snippet provides a short demonstration of the process. Section 2.1.2 Compiling Rust Projects with Cargo Most Rust projects are larger than a single file. These typically include dependencies. To prepare ourselves for that, we'll use a higher level tool than Rust-C called Cargo. Cargo understands how to drive Rust-C and much more. Migrating from a single file workflow managed by Rust-C to one managed by Cargo is a two-stage process. The first is to move that original file into an empty directory. Then, Execute the cargo init command. 
Here is a detailed overview of that process, assuming that you are starting from a file called OK.RS, generated by following the steps in the previous section. 1. Run mkdir project to create an empty directory, e.g. mkdir OK. 2. Move your source code into the project directory, e.g. mvok.rs. OK. 3. Change to the project directory, e.g. cd OK. 4. Run cargo init. From this point on, you can issue cargo run to execute your project source code. One difference from Rust C is that compiled executables are found in a project slash target subdirectory. Another is that Cargo provides much more output by default. If you're ever curious about what Cargo is doing under the hood to drive Rust C, add the verbose flag or dash V to your command. Section 2.2 A Glance at Rust's Syntax Rust is boring and predictable where possible. It has variables, numbers, functions, and other familiar things that you have seen in other languages. For example, it delimits blocks with curly brackets. It uses a single equal sign as its assignment operator. And it is white space agnostic. Section 2.2.1 Defining Variables and Calling Functions Let's look at another short listing to introduce some fundamentals, defining variables with type annotations and calling functions. Listing 2.2 prints A plus B equals 30 to the console. As you can see from lines 2 through 5 in the listing, there are multiple syntactic choices for annotating data types to integers. Use whichever feels most natural for the situation at hand. The source code for this listing is in this file. Note. In the listing, be careful about adding a semicolon to the add function declaration. This changes the semantics, returning unit rather than I32. Although there are only 13 lines of code, there is quite a lot packed into listing 2.2. Here is a brief description that should provide the gist of what's going on. We will cover the details in the rest of the chapter.